How was that? Is that a monitor? Is that most of the monitor? All of the monitor? It's near enough all the monitor. Yeah, I'm filming my monitor. It's terrible, I know. So, I took the hoe up Sutton Bank. I didn't actually go up Sutton Bank. I went up from Kilburn next to the White Horse, which is not a whole lot easier, but it's a hell of a lot safer because far fewer vehicles. And they're going more slowly. Then when that back down that way gets quite exciting. There is very little room and it's very steep in some very sharp corners. Anyway, I got up to the Yorkshire Gliding Club and around a Sutton Bank and I looked up Wensdale and got that view, which you know, I've already posted in video form. And the problem here is here, somewhere. Somewhere over here. Somewhere sort of there-ish. There are a couple of maths. They're marked on the map. Just beneath them is Carp Biscar. And at the foot of Carp Biscar is a track which is at the same elevation as Southern Bank. Can you see that? I couldn't. Can't see it in the still photographs, can't see it in the video footage, couldn't see it at the time. Maybe with a really good telescope you could make it out, but I don't have a really good telescope and a fancy telescope mount for the camera, so I got nothing. And of course, it's kind of hard to get the um, get the hoe in the view from a telescope, so I'd be, I'd be copying from one image and superimposing on another and so on, and that leaves me open to spurious claims of photoshopping it. I don't even have Photoshop installed, I use GIMP, it's free, Photoshop costs money. Anyway. I came up with an alternative. I went across to Carp Biscar and up on the track and I set up there. What you're looking at here is a panorama, so this has been put together by Auto Stitch, neither Photoshop nor GIMP. Panoramic view from up Wensdale looking down at the North York Moors, which are, if I can zoom in, it's quite a large image. All of this, you can see individual trees on the horizon. It's great having a horizon, it allows you to see stuff. You can vaguely make out patches of field, patches of tree, bits of woodland on the horizon, open spaces. There's another patch of trees. That's part of the water level. More trees, another piece of water level. More trees open space on the horizon, distinctly sloping down, some kind of mass there, and this distinctive feature, a bunch of exposed rock, there's a little bit more over here, and there's this diagonal line, I don't know how obvious that really is, but there is a sort of a diagonal there, and there's a bit of clear space here, there's sort of a diagonal there, And then you've got this line along here, and that's as far right as I extended the panorama, unfortunately. The white horse, it turns out, is out of sight around the far side of this bit. That's the cliffs, that's the gliding club, that's Sutton Bank. The National Park Centre is out of sight behind here. These are the trees along the ridge line, and I think this little bit just here is a clear space at the finest view in England, as they call it. So I think that, that spot there is the point that's at the same elevation as where I am now. And this is the scar that's north of it, round a headland in between here. Putting Gourmet Lake somewhere down here, behind this. One problem I had was that I was holding the camera a little bit on the parallel to the field side of level. So this whole panorama, when it was put together, was distinctly sloped. And I had to figure out from this where the water level was. Which is, I don't mean the darkest parts of each of these. Not really obvious where water level is, because this is focused at the North York Moors, not on the water level. I haven't measured the angle across then to level it. 
and then cut it down to 1080 pixel high. So it's a nice landscape, apart from that it's spoiled by these four vertical blurs. But I thought it might be a useful key. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I do have some pictures that did come out level. I took lots and moved the camera up and down in tiny little increments to make sure I get some level ones. You can draw a line from the centre of there through the centre of that and get a straight line so you know this is level. Obviously this image is of limited value because, well, you can't see a right lot of detail in the background of the mort. Maybe slightly more useful, maybe not. Just give you more view of what a mess the setup was. Look at that. One end resting on a on a gate at an angle, and the near end resting on the tripod, which I had to turn tilt all the way down to hold it in place. It's slightly curved under its own weight. It's not really looking good, but it's it works, you know. You can tell it's it's not vertical, but we can cope with that. We we can easily work around not being vertical, water still finds its level, that still gives us a line of sight. One thing, even though you can't see much detail here, you can see, even without me drawing it in, that a straight line across all four water levels is well above this bit of landscape here. So you've got the whole North Yorkshire Moors, which go up way higher than Carperby, and way higher than Carperby Scar, below eye level. So there's your proof of curvature, but this was meant to go further than that. Is that a good picture or is that a duff? I think that's a duff picture that I failed to, failed to delete. I haven't got a draw straight line tool because this is image viewer, not image editor. I do have a ruler. Careful not to touch the screen. You can probably see there-ish that I was looking slightly down when I took that picture. So it's no bloody good, so I should have deleted that one already. Likewise that one, I think. Here's a picture where I have drawn on the red line. And I haven't straightened this, I haven't rectified this picture, I've just drawn the line on. I haven't bothered tipping the whole thing to level. So this is a cut from the original picture rather than correctly leveled picture. You, you lose detail levelling it. You can see out here we have these distinctive bits of field and I think the actual place I want to be, I want to see is off to the right. So unless you can identify, say, that summit or something, or this bump, you can't take measurements from that one. You can see that I think there's a more than 400 meter summit there. It's below eye level, but that's all you can see in that one. That's, is that zoomed out a little further? No, it's the same field of view, that's just not, not being cropped down. That one gives you a wider field of view and it's closer to level left to right as well. See. The previous one we could only see, I think, that far to the right, and on this one we've got all the way across, and there is that scar north of Sutton Bank. Which means Sutton Bank is approximately there. Or it might be there. This is the same image with a bird. And again even closer to correctly leveled. In fact, that red line is sloping the other way. It's sloping slightly down on the right. Same thing. Here's that scar in the distance. Here's the whole horizon line. I took a lot of pictures in the hope that at least some of them would be correctly level. I've deleted the ones, most of the ones that were obviously wrong. Close up, there's a water level where you can see spot on level, but you can see subtle background detail, so that image is absolutely useless. And that's Middleham Castle. Middleham Castle? It's not Middleham Castle, it's Bolton Castle. It says right there it's Bolton Castle. Crikey. Not even 10 minutes into the video, I'm already losing my mind. 
Anyway, that means I have run out of pictures from there to show you, so let's jump to this one and hide all the layers. This is just one of those pictures with nothing added to it. So you have near left, near right, in between them, far right, far left, you have the water level. This mouse cursor is not making it obvious. What gives me a better cursor? Pencil? Yeah, there we go. Near left water level, far left water level, far right water level, near right water level. Not that kind of far right, calm down. Near landscape. I said in the video I thought this might be Leyburn, I actually think that's more likely to be the south end of Redmire. Got this little bit of a hill here. And this bit is the visible scar. So this is quite a wide field of view in this picture. It shows you quite a lot of the North Yorkshire Moors. Extending way out here. Uh, this is only a quarter size. It is possible to um, zoom into full size and see a little more detail. Just a little. On this I have added that line from the centre there. Through the centre there, and you can see it goes through the other two as well. So that is a properly levelled image. And that line, well as far zoomed in as I was when I was drawing it, it got that far. So in the next layer, I just did a copy paste on that line and dragged it down and across to the right to where I think the top of Sutton Bank is, there. I mean, I could be out by a pixel here, it's very hard to be sure. But there's, there are trees on the horizon, there's that diagonal just here. I think that's right. And across here, you can see it's the same line, it's parallel in the upper one. And you have this separation between them, where that's eye level, and that's looking at a different place at the same elevation. And there we have how far apart they are. These five lines were 57 pixels long, these eight 56 pixels long, so an average 56.385 pixels. I'm going to zoom. I'm going to click on the correct window and zoom out. In the video I took up there while I was while I had this set up, I measured water level, to, well, from the bottom to the water level and from the bottom to the top. So there's, there is a subtraction involved in getting the figure 159 millimetres. But we have a distance here and here. I did have the measuring tape, I did measure where my ca how far my camera was for it, from it. 4.5 metres. Again, not accurate to one millimetre. I was holding the camera above the 4.5 metre mark on the measuring tape. It could be anywhere from 4.5. 3.5 to 4.55, you know, it'll vary with how much I zoom in because the front lens moves in and out when I zoom. From these I can calculate radians per pixel. These are notably different results, which tells you that you know, my answer is going to be inaccurate. The, the difference is kind of one third of one third of one figure in the first place, in the first significant figure. So is that about thirty percent? Using this figure for radians per pixel, multiplied by this pixel count, which is achieved, which is the calculated average, I get this number. And I have put in far more decimal places than significant figures than there is any point in having when I'm only drawing this to the nearest one pixel. Uh, it's 50 some pixels. That's really only good to 
two significant figures. But anyway, you can have ten significant figures, why not? Because it's a waste of typing. Okay, so I have this number. I also have a map. This is if you're planning a route, I would recommend Google over Bing because Google has an option for cycle routes. If you're cycling, that's really handy. If you're um, planning a hike or you want to plan particular photographs or something like that, I would recommend Bing over Google because Bing has the Ordnance Survey maps, which is what these are. And again with the zooming in. 50,000 scale Lorden survey map in the middle. This is what it looks like. And the more detailed 25,000 scale. That's Southern Bank. That scar is up here. This is the slightly protruding part that was visible between them. Here's where the road comes up, and you can see the 180, 210, 220, and 250 meter contours are labelled. And up here we have to 60, 70, 80. The 290 contour is kind of lost, and there's a 282 spot height. Uh, might be there. there. Should be a little black dot. So that patch of woods on the summit, which is both sides of the road, fits somewhere around 282 metres, what ground level there is. And over here at the other side, excuse me, I have the 25,000 scale detailed map, really detailed. It shows you you know, the footpath goes across this field here, bridleway goes up this narrow bit and diagonally across this field. It shows you all the walls between fields, it shows individual buildings. These are great maps for hiking. If you're going long distance, 25,000 scale means you might have to carry two maps. But they do show you all the detail you need to know which side of the wall to be on and how many fields to pass before you make a left turn, things like that. That's one of the masts. There are two there. Could have gone up there, apparently. Could have gone up this track and up here and down this one. I'm not sure whether it's open to the public because there's no bridleway mark. These green dashes are bridleway. The short ones are footpath. Right of way. It's a public footpath right of way, not necessarily a footpath on the ground. Subtly different. But anyway, here we have a route up from Carpey, came up this way from Aysgarth, straight up this track, up, up a narrow bit of field, up a track up that field, up a narrow field, to a gate, which is it's actually at this corner of the field, not there, brand new. They've got 2019 on the gatepost. And you have this track running pretty much level along the contours, the gate just there, which is the one I used. And you can see here 240, 250, 280 contour lines marked. And that 280 contour line comes along there and is exactly there, under the wall, on the downhill side of the track, at the east side of that field. Exactly where I was set up. The foot of that wall is at 280 metres. Meaning the water level in my hoe on top of the gate was pretty much 282 metres. Same elevation. Them being the same elevation means they're an isosceles triangle. Same distance from the centre of the earth. They have a halfway point. I have marked, for its worth, the midpoint on the map. Somewhere out in the Vale of York, not far from the A1. Probably a very boring location with no reason to visit it unless you're into whatever that is. So I have this angle, and thanks to law of similar triangles, I know that is the same as that angle. This is not to scale. To scale it would be very long and thin. Of that angle down there at the bottom, this is the opposite, half the distance, 
This is the adjacent, all the way here, up to some point in midair above some spot in the Vale of York west of the A1. And the hypotenuse on each side, up to up to Carpa B. Scar and up to Sutton Bank. Sticking in the known number from the previous screen, we know the angle. We know the opposite is half of 57.1 kilometres, because we can measure that distance from the map, so we get 28.55 kilometres. The sine of that angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is 28.55, sorry, 28.55 kilometres over whatever the hypotenuse is. And we know the sign of that angle because we have a calculator. It's the great thing about radians. This is why radians are so handy. The sign of 0.0034419 something is 0.0034419 something. Those being so similar tells you how good an approximation twice as far away half the angular size is going to be and your camera can't tell the difference between them, so they're that kind of distance, close enough. If it's a hundred times its width away from you, you'd need an amazing camera to tell the difference between half that angular size and the actual angular size at 200 widths away. They're similar enough. You don't need to worry about it. Anyway, that number times I shouldn't say R, I should say hype. That number times the hypotenuse of the triangle is 28.55. The hypotenuse is therefore 28.55 divided by that tiny number, the sine of the angle, which is 9378508 metres. So the apparent radius is your elevation above sea level at each end, 282 metres, less than that, which is 9378256 metres. Of course, that's an apparent radius with refraction. If you assume standard refraction 76R, which I think was somewhere warmer than Yorkshire, you get 8038479 metres, which is a big number. If you assume it was freezing, which it wasn't, it was chilly, but it wasn't freezing, you go with 5 fourths R refraction, which gives you 7502581 meters. Again, this is wrong, but it's not far wrong. And if I go to. No, it's not actually. Oh. Just bring up Leiburn. Leiburn or Leiburn, whatever it is. That should bring up the map. It does. It gave me the current temperature, 8 degrees centigrade, chilly but not freezing. It also gives me this number, 54.31 degrees north. And I have a website that I've visited enough that the, web, the browser knows it, rachneronline.de slash earthradius. Where I can simply paste that, tell it my height of sea level, 282 metres, and calculate. The numbers I should have got according to this are 63 e 64 well 63640071 at sea level and 63640353 for hypotenuse. Not entirely correct, not all that far off. I don't think I did quite as well as I'll be Rooney, but not all that far off. That's not bad for a $200 hoe and a guy with a little old camera somewhere up a hill. It's not bad. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that result. Considering that was what I had to work with. You know.
happy enough with that result.